Hi, I'm Sune and I'm a food geek. If you're new to the channel, I bake a lot of sourdough bread and I make delicious foods from all over the world. I'm on a quest to get the most out of every ingredient and my goal is to teach you how to do that in simple and understandable steps. So join me by subscribing and ringing the bell so you won't miss any future videos. Today we're going to be looking at feeding proportions of sourdough starter uh, and I'm going to feed my starter from 111 to 155 in different jars and we'll see how they progress over time in a time lapse. I'll be compressing about 9 hours real time into 3 minutes worth of video. The notation 111 means the proportion of starter to flour to water in that order. That means if you feed 122 two, you could feed 50 grams of starter, 100 grams of flour, and 100 grams of water, but also 25 grams of starter, 50 grams of flour, and 50 grams of water, as long as the proportions stay the same. Commonly, the last two numbers are the same because we most often work with starters at 100% hydration, meaning the same amount of flour and water in weight. My assumption here is that the 111 will grow the fastest and the 155 will grow the slowest, but we'll see after the time lapse. The starters have all been fed freshly milled wheat, uh, so each container holds 100 grams of mixed starter in the, the correct proportions. Here are the actual weights of starter, flour, and water for each proportion. As you can tell, 144 and 155 are very close to the same weight, so I don't expect uh, much of a difference in growth on those. So I mixed all five different starters into different whack jars, as you can see here. At the end I'll go over what we saw and I'll explain how you can use different feeding proportions in your baking, so stick around. Now all we need is a timer. Are you ready? Let's do this. Obviously, the higher the proportion of starter in the dough, the faster it'll grow. At the end, they grow to the same size though. You can utilize this to bake at different ambient temperatures. If you live in a very warm place and don't have air conditioning or it's just the height of summer, you can use a smaller proportion of starter to flour so that your bulk fermentation will go slower and have time to develop properly. Also, the proportion of starter in the dough will affect the final taste. The higher proportion of starter to flour, the more tangy the bread will be. So if you like a mild bread, use a low proportion. If you really want a sour bread, go for a higher proportion. It's something you should experiment with. Let's say you want a really tangy bread, but it's really warm. So 
how do you do that then? Well, then you make a lavan with a high proportion of starter. So it gets really tangy. Uh, maybe you could even go 2-1-1. The amount of lavan to flour should be relatively low so that the fermentation can go on for longer. Of course, this won't be the tangiest bread you've ever made, but you'd maximize the tang under the given conditions. I hope you learned something today. Remember to subscribe and ring the bell and I'll see you next week.